In this lesson, we will take care of private admin endpoint to create new travels, and client didn't specify anything else. So we will create a simple endpoint, post of data, but on top of that, we need to take care of the login mechanism and middleware to check if it's admin endpoint. So prepare for quite a long lesson, I think. And I will shorten it as much as I can by pasting the code instead of typing it. So first we generate the controller and you have a choice here. We do have travel controller already and you could create that as a resource controller with all the methods like store and show and others. But I prefer to store separately admin controllers separately from public controllers. But as a result, as a downside, we have two controllers with the same name of travel controller just with or without admin namespace. Next, the routes. So I've pasted this line with prefix admin. Again, namespace admin and endpoint prefix. So API v1 admin and then post of travels. And we have the store method in that travel controller. But we have travel controller here and here, which is a bit messy. So did you know I will show you a trick that you can add to the use section, not the full controller, but the namespace. So do use admin here. And then inside in the routes, you can specify that as admin travel controller. So this will be a regular travel controller and this will be admin travel controller. Pretty readable to me. Next, before we go to the travel controller, let's make a travel request. So form request for the validation. Again, I will paste it from my notes, make request. And here the comment is that there could be store travel request and update travel request separately form request classes. But in this case, the validation rules for store and later update, which we'll cover in the future lesson, is the same set of rules. So I combined it into one travel request. And now in our travel controller, we will have store method with using that travel request for validation. And storing the travel will be pretty simple. Again, a bit of copy pasting, travel create with the validated data. We will add the rules in a minute and then we return the same travel resource which we used in the list of travels publicly. You could technically create a separate resource, but I think we could return the same data for public and for admin in that case. And then in the travel request, we need to define the rules of validation. Again, a bit of copy pasting, so return the rules. Nothing really fancy here is public boolean. Name is unique for travels just in case. And then a few more required fields. Then this authorize, you have a choice. You need to check that the role is admin, right, for this and that the user is logged in. And you could do that in authorize method like return auth check or use some other rules. We will add them in the future. But I've chosen not to do that here, but instead I will perform all the checks in the routes and in the middleware. But I just wanted to mention that as an option that you could do that in the form request as well. And let's try to launch that in Postman. So we hit send and the result is this record. It actually works. Slug is auto generated. And if we try to do that again with send, validation also works. Next, we need to protect that endpoint with middleware. In fact, with two middlewares with auth, so logged in user and then role admin. So let's add a middleware here. And for now, let's add just auth. And by default, it would be auth sanctum provided by laravel by default laravel sanctum is installed with new laravel project and that sanctum will be powered by api tokens in our case there are a few different ways to implement laravel sanctum in the documentation you can read about those so api token spa and mobile application and in this case we don't have the context who would be the consumer of that api so i would just assume we will issue the tokens like mobile API tokens. And the mechanism will be this. So there will be a login endpoint with email and password. And if the login is successful, it will return API token. And then each consequent request would be performed with that token passed as a bearer token, it's called. Let me demonstrate step by step. So we'll leave auth sanctum here and we generate the login controller first. Again, I'm pasting PHP artisan make controller, another namespace again, API v1 auth. And also I've chosen to use invocable controllers in this case, because I envision there will be only one method in that login controller, which is invoke by default. So in the routes API, then what we need to do is route 
post, login for example, you could add prefix here if you want to and have login controller class here. And as usual, I will swap that with login controller here on top and no namespace here. Great. Now inside of that login controller, how do we validate everything? For the validation of email and password just being present, I would generate another form request class. Let's call it login request. Again, I've pasted it from my notes and let's change the request to that login request. And inside of that login request, authorize would be true and the rules would be for email and password, something like this, paste it. So it's kind of the first wave of validation, just ensure that those are present. Then we will find the user by the email and try to compare the passwords. The password that is sent, we will hash it and compare with the hashed password from the database. This is exactly how Laravel auth is performed under the hood. And this is the code. User where email comes from that request email and we hash check the password, also autocomplete by PHP Storm. And if something is incorrect, then we return 422 status code. Then if everything is correct, we return the token, generate the token with Laravel Sanctum. This is the code for that. You need the device, which could be mobile API client, like mobile application or anything in the header, user agent, it could be browser, it could be anything. So I'm doing that request user agent here, but you could pass that with request as well. And this is the main function, user create token as plain text token, and we return exactly that. And if we try that in Postman here, we send, and we would get the validation error 422 with provided credentials are incorrect. But if we do provide the correct credentials, I'm sorry for that weak password, but it was just fast to type and generate. We hit send and then we get the access token here and we'll use that exact access token to actually access all the other API endpoints protected by auth sanctum. So for example, now if we try to repeat the same creating travel but without any credentials, we hit send and we will get 401 unauthorized with message unauthenticated. This is exactly what auth sanctum does. And now to actually access that in authorization section of Postman in your API client, it could be differently or manually you could pass so-called bearer token. There are different types of tokens here. So bearer token and I paste it and I paste that exact token and I send and now we are through. It's still a validation error. So just to make sure my new travel to send and now it is successful. So that bearer token provides us with access powered by auth sanctum. But there is also another thing we need to check, as I mentioned, on top of auth sanctum, we need to check the role. So there would be another middleware. So there will be array of middlewares. Auth sanctum will be kind of the first wave. And then the second, I called it role and role would have a parameter of which role would be role admin and role would be a middleware alias, which we will create in a minute. And admin will be the parameter to that middleware. Laravel doesn't have anything about the role by default because it doesn't know the custom logic of our roles, whether they are from the database or from config or from something. So we need to create it ourselves. We paste the middleware. I called it role middleware. And then inside we have handle method. The logic of middlewares is this. It would go to the next request, which means perform the next action until the end, unless you provide it here with some abort, with if statement, with throw exception or something like that. So our goal is to provide the handle method and I will again paste it from my notes with something like this. If not auth, we return 401 status code. If role is not within the role of parameter string role, which is custom parameter I've added manually, then we abort 403. Those are different status code, HTTP status code. This means not logged in, and this means logged in, but doesn't have permissions. Otherwise, if both of them are okay, then we return next request. And we have that role middleware, but we need to register it in the file called app HTTP kernel. There's the list of middlewares, which was renamed actually in Laravel 10. Now it's called middleware aliases, and we just assign the alias of role to our 
role middleware class which is again auto completed by my php storm and now we can use that string in the routes api here and whatever we provide after that becomes the parameter that lands here as a string so now if i try to perform the same request with the user with the token of user bearer token who doesn't have the role of admin we send and the result would be 403 forbidden returned by laravel so we've created our endpoint now we need to write automated tests for that as usual for every feature at the end and these feature tests are hugely important. So there's a quote by Matt Stauffer, a well-known developer in Laravel community. During one conference, he said something like, if you don't have much time to write tests, and if you have to pick which features to write tests for, first write tests for the features that if they fail, you would lose your job. And typically it's something about auth, permission, and handling of payments, something like that. So for example, if someone unauthorized would be able to make changes to your database, that is a huge security risk with potentially quite big bad consequences. So in this case, we will put quite a strong effort on writing those tests. And we have two tests for the login and for actually endpoint of travel create. First, we make the test for login test. And again, as usual, the question is what scenarios do we need to test? It's not about the syntax that much. So in this case, I suggest two cases, whether the login is successful with valid credentials and whether it returns validation error 422 with invalid credentials. Again, pasting from my notes, we use refresh database, we use user factory, and then we try to log in with correct email and password. And password is by default in the user factory. And then we assert that the result is 200 and we have access token returned. And if we have non-existing user, which means I don't create user factory in this method, then we assert that the status is 422. So that is one test class for this lesson. And also we generate admin travel test, which would contain all the tests for creating the travel endpoint. And these are the methods. I will paste it again and we'll explain it. So of course we add use refresh database here as well so first test that public user cannot access adding travel and again the naming of the methods is important so everyone would understand so in this case we assert that the status is 401 then non-admin user cannot access non-admin user cannot access that and here we launch the cedar and also use user factory with the model and role model here and then we assert that the assert status is 403 which means forbidden and this part is interesting so by default use refresh database would have you the structure the migration but would not seed any data for you but in this case we do need that role from the database so we could launch the seed manually in any method of your test case. And we do the same thing here for the success test. So if the role seeder contains admin and we create the user with that role admin, then acting as that user, we post to JSON and first we test that the validation fires. And if everything is good, we test that the assert status is correct and that we have the travel name returned successfully. And now if we launch that PHP artisan test, fingers crossed, we have 15 passed tests. As you can see, with every feature, we generate and create more test files, test cases, test methods, and one by one, we'll have majority of our application covered with tests. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will kind of repeat a similar thing to practice everything and create tours by admin.